In this GCSE and IGCSE video, I'm going to be teaching you how to write the formulae of compounds. So later on in the video, I'll show you how to actually come up with these individual ions. But to begin with, because some examples you get given them, I'm actually going to show you the technique used to actually form the formulae. One thing quickly to point out is the more complex ions, such as here and here, I'll just name them for you so you can recognise them in questions. This is ammonium. OH minus is hydroxide. NO3 minus is nitrate because anything that's got oxygen combined like that has eight on the end. Hence why the next one down is sulfate. And after that you have carbonate. And then everything else is more typical. So there's an oxide ion, chloride, fluoride, lead, lithium, etc. So taking lead oxide as our first example, the first thing you want to do is list both the ions. So here's the lead ion. You can use your periodic table to help you recognise that that's lead. So that's Pb2+. And then oxide is this ion over here. So that's O2-. minus. Because you're writing their formulae, you need to put both of these symbols together. The only thing you need to notice is the charges. If they're equal and opposite as these are, then you're allowed to just put them together like this. And that is your final answer. Now we're going to try calcium chloride. So here's calcium, Ca2+, plus, chloride ions, Cl-. minus. So write down both of their ions again. And then just have a look. The problem is this time you have 2 plus on this side and only 1 minus on that side. They need to be balanced, so you need the equivalent of 2 Cl- minuses. And the way you write your final answer, therefore, is, is CaCl. And you must put a little 2 subscript after the chlorine. And that's the convention in chemistry as to how you acknowledge that 2. So that is calcium chloride. Now we're looking at potassium carbonate. So K plus and CO32 minus. Look at the charges. We've got 1 plus on this side. 2 minus on that side. So really what needs to happen is we need a second K plus. How do we acknowledge it? By putting that small 2 again. And notice the metal always comes before the non-metal ion. Number 4, iron 3 hydroxide. Now this 3 tells you that there's a 3 plus charge on that iron. Remember use your periodic table to help you with the symbol for iron. The hydroxide is over here, it's OH minus. The issue is that we have 3 plus on this side and only 1 minus on that side, so we need the equivalent of 3 OH minuses in order to balance those charges. So how do you write your final answer? Well, you write FeOH3, but be careful that 3 applies to both the O and the H, which is why we insert brackets. So that is your final answer. Let's take calcium hydroxide, Ca2 plus OH minus. Again, we don't have enough OH minuses, so we need two of them. So our final answer looks like this. And don't forget, we insert the brackets. And that is your final answer. Copper nitrate, Cu2 plus. We know it's a 2 due to the 2 in Roman numerals here. Nitrate is on our list, it's NO3 minus. We need an extra nitrate ion in order to counteract that Cu2 plus. So our final answer looks like this. Don't forget to put the nitrate ion in brackets, so that too applies to everything. And I want to quickly show you the swap and drop method, which also works for working out these formulae, and basically means you can get the answer even if you don't understand what I've written on the left-hand side. So all this technique requires is that you write out both ions again. What you have to do that is to take that two and bring it down to the bottom right-hand side, take that invisible one, and bring it down and so your final answer looks like this Cu1 we don't need to write it because it's invisible NO32 because we brought that 2 down don't forget to include brackets and that is your final answer which matches the other answer I worked out now we have iron 3 fluoride so that's Fe3 plus F minus you're going to need three F minuses in order to counteract that Fe3 plus so your final answer looks like this just to show you that swap and drop would have worked. The 3 comes down 
to pass the fluorine. The invisible one comes down to the iron, so your final answer here is FeF3. How about aluminium hydroxide? So that's Al3 plus hydroxide is OH minus. You'll need three OH minuses to counteract that three plus, so your final answer is Al brackets OH3, just to show you swap and drop. The one comes down, the three comes down. Don't forget the brackets, people always forget the brackets. And there's your final answer again. Now we're looking at iron three sulfate. So that three here tells us it's Fe three plus. The sulfate we can see on the right hand side is FO four two minus. The common number here that they both go into, the three plus and the two minus is six. So that's why we need two Fe three pluses and three SO four two minuses. And so to write that, it looks like this. Don't forget the brackets around the SO4, just to show you swap and drop, which does work really well here because it is quite a complicated combination. You bring that three down, you bring the two down, so it becomes Fe2 bracket SO4 close bracket three. But how do I know what the ions are? Because if you're doing a particular exam board, which expects you to know the ions, then this is going to be quite a big job. And I'm going to show you how to do that now. Now that's quite straightforward for group one, two and three metals. Because they're all metals, the charge is the same as the group number. So for the metals, the charge is the same as the group number and you just need to include a positive. So for example, lithium is in group one, so it's Li plus. Magnesium is in group two, so that's Mg2 plus. Aluminium is in group three, so that's Al3 plus. Some metals, such as iron, will have their charge given in the question. And that will tell you whether you're dealing with Fe2 plus or Fe3 plus, so that's really nice. Now for non-metals, you have to do 8 minus the group number. For example, fluorine is in group 7, so you do 8 minus 7 to get 1. So therefore the charge is, and it's always a negative with the non-metals, is minus 1. Oxygen here is in group 6. So therefore you do 8 minus 6 equals 2, so its charge is 2 minus. Nitrogen is in group 5, so you do 8 minus 5 equals 3 to get 3 minus. And that's how you work out the charges on those non-metal ions. Now, unfortunately there will be just a few that you do just need to learn. For the sake of it, so ones like zinc here, for example, that's Zn2 plus. Silver over here, you just need to learn is Ag plus. But if we just look at this list again, so I can go through it. Lead, yes, you will have to learn is Pb2 plus. Lithium and potassium are both in group one, hence why they have one plus. Calcium and magnesium are both in group two, hence why they're two plus. Sodium is also in group one, so it belongs over here, one plus. Aluminium is in group 3, so 3 plus. And looking at some of these ones, group 7, 8 minus 7 is 1 minus. The only issue is these ones here. You will simply have to learn these formulae as well as their names and be able to recognise them. But in the earlier part of the video, I hope I showed you how you actually use them to correctly identify these quite complicated compounds. <laughs> <laughs>